I mean, we can't look at the U.S. in a vacuum, but is it, are we just getting sucked down by that anchor globally? I, I think that's definitely part of it. But uh, you got to remember that even, I want to say, six weeks ago, I was sitting on this chair and we were talking about how the markets were at all-time highs, yet yields were starting to, to drop. And we saw this disconnect and we said, which one's right? right. It seems that the bond market was reading the trade tensions uh, with a lot more seriousness than the equity markets. And now the equity markets are kind of waking up to the reality that this is a little bit bigger than just a trade uh, uh, squirm. So, Jim Tierney, when we look at what happens with equities or the economy from here, if we go into recession and it's a really awful one, you can understand some of the moves and the reasons why this is all being priced in. And even then, I'm not so sure you can, frankly. What, and, and what if we don't? What if that doesn't happen? I mean, even the tariffs that have gone into effect this round, we've already seen an offsetting effect by the move in China's currency. So does that really mean that the stock market is, is setting up for some big fall? I don't think so. I think this is a great opportunity for equity investors. We just got through second quarter earnings, and there were some great reports. Look at Microsoft. Look at MasterCard. You can buy those stocks 5 to 10 percent cheaper, and they will be relatively unaffected. We just had Zoetis report earnings yesterday. Great numbers. The stock popped. It's trading off today. Guess what? You're still going to give your medicine to your dog or cat, no matter what happens. Right. And great I, place to hide. I, I, look, I understand that if things slow further from here, you know, there's risk out there. It seems like no matter what we're talking about, what growth scenario you can't escape the idea that central banks are going to be doing more bond buying. You heard Rick just talk about it. The U.S. is doing more bond buying because it's not shrinking the balance sheet the way that it was going to. It, how do you, t if you have a buyer of last resort, who would be selling bonds? I think you have to ask the question, are central banks pushing on a string? And we think they are. This is not stimulating the economy. Look at what's happened in the EU for years. It hasn't generated the growth they want. So is this the best approach? I don't think so. I think the markets rationalize over time. We have modestly higher rates. That's fine for the economy. And in that scenario, you really want to be in equities. All right. Guy, we have talked about the levels of rates, but there's also the yield curve, which I have to bring up. You know, the Fed cut rates last week after intense market pressure, and that didn't solve anything, so to speak. The yield curve didn't steepen. It's flattened. Uh, conditions have tightened, financial conditions have tightened. They have not eased. Is this market going to keep pushing this Fed to do more and more? And is the Fed going to listen to that? Where does it end? Well, you're right that there is a sort of feedback loop that's emerged, and not just between the Federal Reserve, but also between the Federal Reserve and some of the trade tensions. Not just between the Federal Reserve and the market, but also between the Federal Reserve and some of the trade tensions that have emerged in the last few weeks as well. So right now, the markets are pricing somewhere between a 30 and 40 percent chance of as much of a 50 basis point rate cut at the September FOMC meeting. And so long as these trade tensions are there and there are a stated reason for the Federal Reserve to ease policy, it makes all the sense in the world for the markets to continue pushing the Federal Reserve down this route. And Jim, to your comment a moment ago about pushing on a string, it doesn't matter whether these uh, rate cuts are, are actively stimulating the economy in the short term. What matters is whether the central bank, in this case the Fed, thinks they are simulating the economy. And that right there is enough for these rate cuts to persist a lot longer than we think they might.